Here, in the vast, silent theatre of our solar system, orbits a world that has captivated human imagination for millennia. It is the fourth planet from our Sun, a neighbour to our own blue Earth. This is Mars. It travels through the cold darkness of space, a steadfast companion on our journey around the star that gives us life. Though it appears in our night sky as a mere pinprick of reddish light, it represents so much more. It is a beacon of curiosity, a destination of dreams, and a profound reminder of the sheer scale of the cosmos. Mars is a world of smaller stature when compared to our own. If Earth were the size of a large fruit, Mars would be but a small berry beside it. Its diameter is roughly half that of our planet, a fact that has profound consequences for everything on its surface. This smaller size means it has less mass, and therefore a much weaker gravitational pull. An astronaut standing on Mars would feel wonderfully light, able to leap higher and carry heavy equipment with surprising ease. Despite its stark and seemingly desolate nature, the surface of Mars is a gallery of geological marvels, sculpted on a scale that dwarfs anything found on Earth. Here we find landscapes that speak of a violent and dynamic past, a history written in stone and sand. The most breathtaking of these is Valles Marineris, the Mariner Valley. This is not merely a canyon, it is a colossal system of chasms that stretches for over 4,000 kilometers, roughly the distance from one coast of the United States to the other. If it were on Earth, it would span entire continents. Its deepest points plunge several kilometers down, revealing ancient layers of rock that hold the secrets of Mars's early formation. Rising from the Tharsis volcanic plateau is a feature of truly mythical proportions, Olympus Mons. This is the largest volcano in the entire solar system. It is a shield volcano, built up layer by layer from ancient lava flows, and it stands nearly three times taller than our own Mount Everest. Its base is so vast that if you were to stand at its edge, the summit would be far beyond the horizon, hidden by the curvature of the planet itself. At the planet's poles, we find another of its great wonders, the polar ice caps. Much like Earth, Mars has a northern and a southern cap, and they're stunningly beautiful. These are not made solely of water ice, but are a curious combination of frozen water and frozen carbon dioxide, or dry ice. As the Martian seasons change, these caps grow and shrink dramatically. And then there are the storms. Martian weather is dominated by wind, and this wind can whip up the fine red dust into localized dust devils, or on occasion, into planet encircling dust storms. The climate on Mars is a study in extremes, a world of dramatic contrasts far removed from the relatively stable conditions we enjoy on Earth. The primary driver of this harsh environment is its thin atmosphere. Without a thick blanket of air to trap the sun's warmth, heat escapes back into space with remarkable speed. This leads to temperature swings of an incredible magnitude. On a summer day near the Martian equator, temperatures might climb to a relatively comfortable 20 degrees Celsius. But as the sun sets, the warmth vanishes and the temperature plummets, reaching as low as minus 73 degrees Celsius in a single night. The seasons on Mars are also far more pronounced than our own, largely due to its more elliptical or oval-shaped orbit around the sun. A Martian year is almost twice as long as an Earth year, meaning each season is stretched out over many months. Ultimately, the defining difference between the climate of Earth and Mars comes down to the presence of liquid water. On Earth, our vast oceans act as a global thermostat, absorbing and releasing heat to moderate our climate and drive our weather systems through the water cycle. Mars has no such luxury. Our journey to understand Mars began not with footsteps, but with robotic envoys sent across the gulf of space. These were our eyes and our hands, the pioneers that first touched the red soil on our behalf. In 1976, NASA's Viking landers made history. They were the first spacecraft to successfully operate on the Martian surface, and they sent back the very first images from the ground. But a new era of exploration began with the arrival of the rovers. These were mobile geologists designed to wander the Martian terrain and investigate its history up close. The twin rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, 
landed in 2004 for what was planned as a 90-day mission. In a stunning display of engineering resilience, they continued to explore for years, traveling for miles and uncovering definitive proof that liquid water once flowed on Mars. They were followed by the car-sized Curiosity rover in 2012, a mobile science laboratory that has been exploring an ancient lake bed inside Gale Crater ever since. The most recent chapter in this grand story is being written by the Perseverance rover, which landed in Jezero Crater in 2021. This location was chosen specifically because it was once a river delta, a place where water flowed into a vast lake billions of years ago. This long and impressive history of robotic exploration is all leading to one ultimate goal, sending humans to Mars. This is an undertaking of immense complexity, a challenge that will push the boundaries of science, engineering and human endurance. The sight of human footprints in the red dust, next to the tracks of our robotic pioneers, would represent a monumental leap for our species. The story of Mars, as we are now discovering, is a story of water. Today, the planet is a bone-dry desert, but the evidence of a wetter, warmer past is etched all across its surface. Orbiters flying high above have mapped out features that are unmistakably ancient river valleys, some stretching for hundreds of kilometers. We see deltas, like the one in Jezero Crater, where rivers once deposited sediment into standing bodies of water. Our robotic geologists on the ground have confirmed this story written in the landscape. The Opportunity rover discovered small, blueberry-shaped spheres of the mineral hematite, which on Earth almost always forms in the presence of water. The Curiosity rover has drilled into mudstones, rocks formed from fine silt settling at the bottom of a lake, and found them rich in the chemical ingredients necessary for life. So where did all the water go? This is one of the greatest mysteries in planetary science. The leading theory is that Mars lost its water to space. Early in its history, Mars, like Earth, likely had a protective magnetic field generated by its molten core. But because Mars is smaller, its core cooled and solidified more quickly. Its magnetic shield failed. Without this protection, the solar wind began to strip away the planet's atmosphere over billions of years, thinning it out and lowering the pressure. The fundamental question that drives our exploration of Mars, the one that resonates most deeply within us, is simple. Are we alone? Mars offers the most compelling place in our solar system to seek an answer. We know that life as we understand it requires three key ingredients, liquid water, essential chemical elements, and a source of energy. The story of our Martian exploration has been a process of checking off these items from the list. We have found overwhelming evidence for abundant liquid water in Mars's past. We have found the essential chemical building blocks, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and more, in its rocks and soil. For a significant period in its early history, Mars appears to have been a habitable world. It had all the necessary conditions to support the emergence of life. The Perseverance rover is not looking for complex creatures or walking organisms. It is searching for biosignatures, the subtle fingerprints that life leaves behind. These could be specific types of organic molecules that are difficult to produce without biology, or patterns in the rock layers that suggest the activity of microbial mats. Finding such a sign in the samples returned from Jezero Crater would tell us that life is not a unique miracle of Earth, but a common phenomenon in the universe, ready to emerge wherever the conditions are favorable. As we stand here today, on the cusp of a new era of discovery, Mars represents more than just a scientific curiosity. It has become a tangible goal, a destination that beckons humanity forward. The prospect of sending humans to walk on its red surface is no longer the realm of science fiction. It is a serious engineering and scientific endeavor being pursued by space agencies around the world. Becoming a multi-planet species with a permanent, self-sustaining presence on Mars could be a crucial step for the long-term survival of humanity. Life on Earth has always been vulnerable. A single catastrophic event, a massive asteroid impact, a supervolcanic eruption or a self-inflicted disaster could threaten our existence. Establishing a second home for humanity on another world is a form of planetary insurance. 
The challenges of creating a life on Mars will be immense, but in facing them, we may discover solutions to some of the most pressing problems we face here on Earth. To survive on Mars, we must become masters of sustainability. The innovations required for living on a resource-scarce world like Mars could revolutionize how we live on Earth, guiding us toward a more sustainable and resilient future for our own planet. In the end, the journey to Mars is about more than just technology, survival, or even science. It is about the human spirit. For millennia, we have looked to the stars and dreamed. Now, we have the power to turn those dreams into reality. The Red Planet awaits. It is a silent, ancient world, and it may hold the key not only to our past, but to the future of what we can become.